where is your God? You know, all of us are going to have seasons when it seems like God has forsaken us. Where we just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And we're in distress of soul. We're hurting because the devil is attacking and we haven't seen God yet. Now, I want to encourage you with this first point, which is that even very spiritual people are going to have seasons of attack and grief. David, who was undoubtedly a man after God's own heart, a prophet, one of the most spiritual people of the entire world, had a, a rough season he was going through. And he was crying. You know, there's nothing wrong with crying. <laughs> It doesn't mean you're unspiritual. Obviously, if we're crying, we're in good company because David was crying. It's all right to pour forth your heart before God. There are four things in these Psalms that I think are keys to working through your season of distress. And we're just about to come to the first one. And if you're wise, you might to either try to remember these or put them in your phone or something. This is the first key to dealing with a season of distress. Number one, verse four. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. The first key is that you pour out your soul. Everybody say, I will. I will. In times of distress, in times of distress. Pour, out my soul to God. pour out my soul to God. The Hebrew word for that, some of you have heard me teach on this, is prosuche. Everybody say prosuche. prosuche. You may not remember that, but you better remember the concept. When you get into a hard place, it's very right for you to pour forth your heart unto God and to connect with God. God loves it when we are intimate with him and telling him how we're feeling. And you know, in those seasons, there is nothing off limits in terms of what you tell God. You can tell him, Lord, I really don't like this. I don't believe that you are doing right in allowing this in my life. I'm angry at you. I'm angry at the circumstance. I'm angry at my wife. I'm angry at my kids. I'm angry at the bank. I'm angry at my whatever. You know, you can tell God how you feel. God wants to know how you feel. And he thrives on that kind of relationship. And there's times when all you can do is just get before God in a quiet place and pour forth your heart unto him in a way that is authentic and real. And you put some tears in the carpet someplace. I remember many years ago when we lived in New York City and we were dead poor and we needed more money. I needed a better job. I had to get before God one afternoon and I planted about a, a cup of tears in the carpet in our apartment there in Manhattan because I needed a breakthrough. Yeah. I needed a breakthrough. Right. You know, it was affecting my relationship with my wife that we didn't make enough money. She was distraught and I needed a breakthrough. I got my breakthrough incidentally. God came through and a few months later, I got a job that tripled my income. God came through. But you've got to learn how to connect with God. Don't run away from God. That's exactly the opposite of what God wants you to do. Yeah. He wants you to run to Him yeah. and tell Him how you feel. Yeah. And you can get down and dirty with God. You can, you, you can cuss at God. Now, I'm not saying that you ought to do that. But God understands what He cannot do is when you turn your back on Him and just walk away and have no relationship. So the first key is you've got to learn how to be real with God and pour out your heart. And frankly, I'm talking to the choir here because all of you all know how to do that. I've seen you do it right here at God's altar. This is a good place to pour out your heart to God. So that's the first key. You pour out your soul. Now notice the word is soul. That's our emotions. Our, how we feel. Verse 5. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Notice that David's talking to his own soul. I've mentioned this quite a few times from this pulpit. You've got to learn in the spirit to talk to your own soul, to exhort your own soul. Put 
put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. David was talking by the Spirit to his own soul. And he said, come on, soul, get in line. Put your hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. And here comes the second key. Therefore, I remember you. Everybody say, I remember. I remember. When you're in distress of soul over a particular problem, you got to put into memory the things that God has done for you in the past. That's very easy for me. It's very easy for me to think about the fact that I had a horniated disc and they wanted to do surgery on my back. Then the best neurologists in all of Arizona looked at me with MRIs and said, yep, you need a surgery. I said, I don't want a surgery. And I went to the man of God in Cincinnati, Ohio, Randy Clark, to a healing meeting. And he laid hands on me and I fell down and I woke up completely healed. And I never have had a bit of pain ever since. I can remember that. I can remember that. I can remember how my son Joel, when he was a little boy, was severely asthmatic. And he was in the hospital about six to eight times a year and just about died several times. And God touched him on the mountaintop in a Bible camp in northern Arizona. And he never, ever had asthma again. I got stuff that's in my toolbox, my memories, where I can pull them out and I can say, you know what? God did it then. God did it then. God did it then. God did it then. And he's going to do it again. Encourage your own soul by remembering what God has done for you. And frankly, what you're facing today may not be as bad as what you faced in the past. Everybody say, I remember. I remember. Verse 7, deep calls to deep at the noise of your cataracts. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. He's talking about the floods of affliction and tribulation. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. And at night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down? He says it again. Oh, my soul. And why are you in turmoil within me? Put your hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Psalm 43, verse 1. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. I want to give you a third key. The third key is this. No matter what you're going through, there is guidance and wisdom for you. The Bible says that there is a witness within ourself. There is an anointing, according to 1 John 2, that guides us into perfect truth. According to James 1 and verse 5, there is wisdom that he wants to put into you. I declare unto you, there is always a way of escape. There is always a way out of your trial. There is always a way to a better place. There is always a pathway unto a place of peace. That pathway, God, is going to show you. The psalmist says, send forth your light and your truth. I declare unto you, when you connect with God, when you come into the place of prayer, the Holy Ghost will show you what to do next. Everybody say, there's always a next step. There's always a next step. Say, God's going to show it to me. God's going to show it to me. So the third thing to do in a season of distress is in a season of prayer, trust that God's going to download the vision into your heart. God's going to put that next step. Now, he may only give you one more step. He might only give you what you're supposed to do today and tomorrow. That's okay. You don't need 10 years from now. 
All you need is right now. You need to know where to go next. Everybody see next. God's going to give you the light that you need for that next step. And then once you get there, he's going to show you the light for the next step. Then the light for the next step after that. And there is a pathway of escape. You're going to get out of that trial. That's the third key. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. This is the fourth and the last key that I've seen in these particular psalms. And that is this. When you're in a season of distress, you need to go to the altar of God. You need to get into God's presence where there are other people who are spiritual. You need to come to prayer meetings like this. You need to come to church. You need to get in the presence of God yes, in an God. intense way. You need to seek God with all your heart and with all your mind. You need to get into the presence. You need to come to the altar. This is a special place. There's all kinds of anointing in this physical place. An altar is a place that God has sanctified as a place where you encounter God. You know, you can encounter God in your prayer closet. We all do that every day. But there are special places where the anointing is thicker than other places. They're called altars. And it's a place where you can know for sure that you've had an encounter with God and God is going to do it. And I'm telling you, you may not get your miracle until you come to that special altar of God. As I said just a few moments ago, I had to go to a special altar in a church in the suburbs of Cincinnati, Ohio. I flew from Arizona to Cincinnati to get to a particular altar. God showed me. He told me. If, and that was my next step. That was the light that came to my heart. He said, if you fly there, I'm going to heal you. I went to an altar where the power of God to heal was present. And why it took to have to go to Cincinnati, I don't know. But you know what? I don't care either. Because I got my healing at an altar just like this one in hey. Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey. And there's nothing the devil can do to steal my healing. Woo. I haven't had an MRI to look at my back since then. I don't know if it looks good or not, but I don't care because I don't feel a thing. <laughs> I'm just thankful for God's faithfulness. So if you are in trouble, you remember those four keys. You pour out your heart unto God. You remember. You come unto an altar of God. And you trust 